Hello PML, my name's Stuart, one of the admin team here at PML Draft, and I'm speaking to the head admin, Joe Zamora, on his team coming up in the new YouTube Draft League. Hey, How are we going, Joe? I'm doing good, Stuart. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> no problem at all. I suppose you couldn't interview yourself. That would have been a bit silly. Yeah. I am crazy so, enough just to... That's right. That's right. So we've got a few questions here just about draft leagues in general and your picks in this league. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one I had was, what made you want to put this draft league together? All right. Um, basically, basically uh, we... I've been doing draft leagues here in PML for the last two and a half years, and I'm almost going on three. And my my goal with PML was to compete with the GBA and WBE and draft leagues of that sort. But yeah. most of them put their own, you know, most of them pretty much do it the same. So I thought I'd put my own spin on it with uh, how we draft. Um, you know how we go tier specific, and then we have four right, free some picks. Of the, some of the rules, yeah. So it's not really point based like most draft leagues. So I feel it gives it more of a how do you say it, more strategy to the draft than that's right point system because pretty much you can. I just feel be... yeah. Personally, I feel like it levels the playing field a lot more. I feel like a lot of the teams in every draft. Are quite even, and I like that. It's better than being blasted off the team by off the um, planet by a team that's full of threats because they were better. They had a better pick than you in the draft order. Yeah, and I feel um, a lot of people get discouraged with like middle picks and stuff, but I feel every team kind of gets a fair pick, especially since we do it in uh, the way we do. So that leads me into uh, the second question, which you know you've been doing draft league for so long. What makes you? What made you want to start them initially, and what what keeps you coming back? Um, I mean, pretty much just the impact that it has on the coaches that play. Um, a bunch of them love it and enjoy it. And originally, we started out with giving out rings, and it was kind of an issue because uh, they'd be real delayed to be sent out. So now we give out medals and. We do it worldwide, basically. Um, our last two winners were one was from Ireland and one was from Australia, and they both uh, got their um, medal shipped by me. It took a little while, but it finally got to them. It gets and, there eventually, uh, that's right. Yeah, and I feel like um, it's real rewarding for me in a way to kind of bring out some joy to people who don't normally get to do things like this because, you know, most of them is, are YouTubers and stuff like that. So right. I feel like it gives the everyday person a real good chance to compete with Pokemon in a way they would normally get a chance to. Yeah, and I feel like introducing the D-League has been really good for that as well. I feel like a lot, a lot of people um, took it up as an opportunity to uh, give it a go and practice. Oh, yeah, and... Then and... Hope Hopefully earn a spot in the A-League for next season, which is always a bonus. <laughs> oh, yeah, and as you can obviously tell, um, the competition in the A-League went from every now and then battle to pretty much every battle as intense as it can be. That's right. It was 0 to 100 this season, for sure. I think <laughs> as far as exhibitions go, it is an exhibition. It's very true. Yeah, I think um, most of your battles were timer they actually, you're really close. Um, a couple of them, them, myself and my opponent had set up and we were going to win, but we just ran out of time. There was one battle I was um, going to, I was pretty sure I was going to win and I had Sylvie on out, on fire. They had no fairy resist, but we just ran out of time and I had to take the time. I'm pretty sure it was, I know something like it was only a couple of, like another 30 seconds or a minute and I would have, would have had the win. And then likewise, I was getting annihilated in the match. So, yeah, this time is really killing things. But, you know, we make it work. We yeah. make it work. Luckily, I haven't had too many timer battles, but it's either I win it close or I get beat by a lot. So, <laughs> hopefully I can yeah, change I that strategy here. I know a lot of teams are like that, though. Like, they'll they'll win 5 -0 one week and then they'll get drubbed 0-5 uh, the next week. So, you know, it's a matter of um, weighing up 
I'm quite a strategic battler. I, will, I like to take my time and I don't get to that opportunity. So some of my battles will just fall away because I've made the wrong play. But, you know, it's part of the challenge. Oh, yeah. Make it work. So um, what did you hope to accomplish with your team strategy-wise in this draft? I quite like your team. Um, you know, like, like Blastoise, Charizard, Life and Rock together are really good. They deal with a lot of threats. They are a threat. Um, what was your thoughts going into the draft? So basically what I was thinking is, uh, obviously I knew I would have the will pick in second tier, and I clearly wanted Charizard. So I knew I was going to be able to build around him. Who would have thought? Yeah, right? I got <laughs> lucky on that because I was really hoping I would be able to draft Charizard this season. And um, I kind of used my tier one pick as what most people wouldn't use it as. I used it kind of to build around my tier two pick. Yeah. So uh, I really liked in your uh, description on the on the analyst video that uh, you knew I was going to be using Blastoise more as a defensive pivot to help the team. Yes. Because that is mostly what it's going to be used for, but you never know how I might get cheeky and send it out with rocks up and just shell smash and wipe a team that, away. That's right. That's right. That's the surprise factor. So, I mean, that's basically why I drafted the way I did. Um, I drafted Jolteon Tier 3 when I didn't want to, but I knew if I didn't, someone else would, and it would cause a lot of problems for my team. And it also fit my team pretty well at the same time, so I couldn't complain about it. It's not like it was a bad pick. It's just not no, the, uh, It's just not yeah. quite the pick I was going to go for at that moment. Yeah. I mean, if you want an electric type, there's worse out there than Jolteon, you know? So <laughs> you can't go wrong. Oh, yeah. And basically, um, I, I really hope I can uh, get my team to set up my Charizard to get in a good spot and hopefully he can be the kill leader of the season. But really, I'm just going to take my wins where I can get them. And the reason I drafted the way I did is, as y'all touched on in this video again, um, I like to run many different sets with one Pokemon. So my opponent never really knows what's coming to him. And it's good you've got you've got Charizard, you've got um, who else? Did I think Gudra was another good one that I thought where you can run it physical, you can run it special. Um, it doesn't, you know, you're not pigeonholed into one particular way to play it. I think it's a really good Dragon type, uh, and it fit your team really well. I think it can take hits that a lot of your other Pokemon don't want to take. Um, you know you. Sure, Charizard four times resist grass, but still you don't want to take it unnecessary chip, especially if you're running that scary belly drum set where you want as much <laughs> HP as possible. But uh, yeah, you know, I just think with that Lipard, you know, you've got lots of options as far as leads. You've got lots of options as far as um, you know, hazards, and um, you don't want to have to D-Max Charizard every match. But you know, if people aren't prepared for it, they're going to get blown back. So yeah, it was a good. Overall, I think it was a very well-rounded team and definitely you know, the top one or two in the league. So, oh, you know, yeah. good work. And, and I definitely <laughs> drafted uh, out of my wheelhouse. I know I got to pick up a bunch of my favorites, but I also picked up some Pokemon I'm not quite comfortable with, but I did see that they would fit the team rather well, like Dusknor and Rhyperior. Yeah. So, well, hopefully I can make pretty good use of them, even with the lack of experience I have with that on my team. So, outside of Charizard, who are you looking forward to using the most? Oh, man. Um, I would have to say my second tier two, uh, Lycanroc. I've been missing Excel Rock so much. And then with it, <laughs> Tough Claws boosted, Drill Run, uh, Swords Dance capability, it gets Sucker Punch. It's... It's move pool is just so vast and amazing that I, I really missed it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Have you used Berserker before? Um, I kind of used Berserker. It's not one of the mons I'm much familiar with either, but I do know it's another Tough Claws mon. It gets Fake Out, and yeah. it could put a hamper on some of those Staller Pokemon who try to Toxic and... I can pretty much set up for free 
on those kind of mons and do some damage there. Yeah, I feel like it's going to surprise people, to be honest. I've um, battled it very, very rarely, so I couldn't tell you what all its sets are. But, yeah, I just saw, you know, Steel Type, it was last hit, last pick of the draft. I think it was a good pickup. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of a steal as my last pick because, <laughs> no pun intended. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was really a good answer. I kind of wanted a fairy, fairy Dragon Steel Core. I couldn't really get it. But I'm glad I at least got a steel type. Yeah, it's good. At least you summoned to resist, resist those dragons. Mm -hmm. And also a good answer for a toga kiss. <laughs> yes, that's very true. So what team do you think is going to be your like biggest challenge this season? Who do you think you're going to be meeting in the final? Um, I don't know if I make it to the final with the, with the powerhouses that are in this league. Um, but I do know who I hope to face is, uh, the Nido Kings. I know I will have some problems with the Aerons and that Dracovish, and I know I'll have some struggles with the Umbreons and their stall team, but really when it comes down to it, I know the Nido Kings have a great team and a coach who really knows what he's doing. So I feel like he would be the hardest competitor against me this season. And yeah, I agree. I agree. I think you guys are going to have a cracker of a match. And it never hurts that it's going to be the last game of the season as well. So, could decide top of the league. Yeah, it could decide uh, that ball. Well, this season we won't really have a bye. It'll be uh, the top four, and basically uh, oh, no. number one will play number four, and number two will play number three. So, we'll just have to see how Fantastic. that goes. Hundred percent. So just to close up here, um, I've got a question of my own. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, if you had a mundane superpower, what would it be? If and I by, had... mundane, by mundane superpower, I mean, for example, if I turned up somewhere, there would always be a car park directly outside the door for me. That would be my <laughs> mundane superpower. What would yours be? Wow, that's, a, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I guess if I had a mundane superpower... Hmm, that is a very good question. I guess it would be able to be... My superpower would be I would be able to summon whatever I want to eat right in front of me at any time. That, that is a fantastic superpower. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Thinking the same thing about with coffee. I was like, man, maybe you just have unlimited coffee whenever you wanted it. Yeah, I mean I, I, I mean, I know I'm a fat ass and I love food, so it's just like, that works for me. Oh, come on, man. You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> all right. Well, cheers for that, Joe. I um, appreciate being interviewing you today. So I wish you best of luck in this league and, you know, bring bring back the bacon, as they say. Bring home the bacon. Oh, I definitely hope so. I don't want to have to send another medal around the world. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all.